On April 1st, 2003, RFC 3514 proposed adding the evil bit to IPv4 packet headers. Benign packets have this bit set to zero. Those that are used for an attack will have this bit set to one. This proposal was met by a great deal of enthusiasm. Internet systems could become more predictable. Secure systems could be programmed to drop evil packets. Insecure systems would know to crash or be penetrated when the evil bit was set. <laughs> Unfortunately, RFC 3514 has not been fully implemented. So, we can never tell when network traffic is hostile. Currently, one of the main ways we detect hostile activity is by using intrusion detection systems, or IDS. All our modern IDS makes mistakes. IDS has some of the same problems as mm, bad dog detection. IDS sometimes fails to detect bad behavior. This is called a false negative. Failing to detect bad behavior is unfortunate, but it is an expected failure. IDS always misses something. We plan for it. If we're wise, we build additional protective layers. IDS sometimes flags good behavior as evil. This is called a false positive. False positives can be much more expensive than false negatives. False positives distract precious attention from important work. They betray our trust in the IDS. And they also damage the reputation and integrity of the security team. Most of the expense of using an IDS is the additional burden of dealing with IDS mistakes. We tolerate this expense because we don't have a better detection tool. IDS may suck, but we don't have better alternatives. Sometimes the IDS alerts us to really important stuff. And over time, a good security team can tune their IDS and their response to it to increase overall value. Finally, dealing with IDS makes us look important and productive. IDS are sometimes grouped by their point of view or they're grouped by their behavior. IDS can be internal or external to the affected system. Internal host-based IDS include Tripwire, OSSEC, and Microsoft Defender. External network-based IDS include Snort and the various next-generation firewalls. IDS are also categorized by their behavior. IDS can look for known bad behaviors or they can look for exceptions to good behavior. Signature-based IDS includes Snort and McAfee Virus Scan. Anomaly-based IDS includes Zeek and Loom Systems. Most descriptions of IDS are quite optimistic. They describe the possibilities. They mostly ignore the current reality. Current IDS has serious issues. First, the greatest handicap of IDS is our expectations. We expect it to protect us, even when we create easily hackable environments. IDS works best when it's another lifeline in a controlled and limited environment. IDS is almost worthless 
in an uncontrolled, unlimited environment. The next greatest issue of IDS is the IDS marketplace. IDS marketing is dominated by our fear and the vendor's greed. This makes for poor decision making. For example, security folks prefer to only have alerts that are absolutely important and actionable. But the vendors get paid more if they flag lots of stuff as potentially bad. And lots of bad helps the vendors sell product. Meanwhile, our attackers are becoming more skilled. Much of the modern attack comes from governments or well-funded crypto ransomware groups. They can afford to hire or train the best attackers. Modern attackers are frequently skilled at avoiding IDS. Finally, there's the encryption problem. Most network IDS signatures are ineffective because the data streams are encrypted. IDS comes in many forms and many costs. Each organization has some form of IDS, but most IDS is not productive. IDS only becomes useful when it is properly managed. IDS has to be constantly updated. IDS events have to be evaluated and properly handled. So you really only see productive IDS after an organization has incident response and IT specialization. Getting the full benefit of IDS usually takes organizational commitment and one or two dedicated specialists. Now the vendor might charge you a lot for your IDS, but the real expense is the cost of properly handling IDS events. Our IDS have thousands, maybe tens of thousands of conditions that are constantly assessed across millions of activities. And sometimes the assessment fails. There is always a chance that the IDS screwed up. Any given IDS event might mean something or it might not. IDS alerts are not a conclusion. They are a starting point. Once IDS flags something, you begin a process of evaluation and confirmation. And you better make it quick because it might be really important. Good luck.